shaking and baking all of my Breaking Bad fans. Okay, disclaimer right out of the gate. This is a review of the Breaking Bad movie that just got released at midnight. So if you are a Breaking Bad fan and you are going to watch this made for Netflix movie and you don't want to hear spoilers, turn the fucking channel right now. Hit pause, hit the back button, go to a different video, go watch something else. Because this is going to have a lot of spoilers. I don't know how to do an honest review of this fucking steaming pile of dog shit movie that they put together without spoilers. So, this is your last chance. There are going to be a lot of spoilers. And if you have not watched the Breaking Bad series and you don't know much about the show, I'm not going to spend 25 minutes explaining to everyone what the fuck is going on with this show. So if you haven't watched it, or you tried to watch it and didn't like it, you're probably not going to get much out of this video. Got to be honest. Okay. Now that the spoiler alert is out of the way. Wow. I don't even know where to start. Um, I didn't have any outrageous, unrealistic expectations of this little made-for-Netflix movie that Vince Gilligan and the staff of Breaking Bad threw together. I really didn't. I was, I was expecting it to just be a continuation of... Because I think everybody felt kind of shitty that we didn't have a more positive ending for the character Jesse Pinkman, uh, played by Aaron Paul. It was implied at the, at the end of the finale, the last season of Breaking Bad, that he got away, he's like screaming and he's dirty and scarred and bugging bah! at the end, and it's implied that he got free, didn't get arrested, <laughs> And maybe, I mean, I was under the impression he somehow found some of the money that he made during his time with Walter White. And, uh, I don't know, went on to live who knows fucking where. So, this little mini movie picks up exactly at the same spot where the finale ended. Which... It's about the only thing I liked. No, there was there was one other thing that I liked about this, but it, it wasn't wasn't much. Okay, so Jesse has been locked in a cage and forced to cook meth for this this group of lunatic white supremacist maniacs who have all just been murdered because Walter rigged a fucking remote control device on a fully automatic belt fed M60 machine gun and mowed everybody down. So, Jesse escapes in this little raggedy ass El Camino. And the first place he goes is to his best friend's house, Badger and Skinny Pete. Does, does anybody else not understand how fucking stupid that is? I got bad news for you. The cops would have been sitting right there in the driveway waiting for his ass. That's the first place they're going to go. He doesn't have a good relationship with anybody in his family. It's the only, only people he really knows that can trust him are these two idiots. So he shows up. He's a fucking mess. And it's all dramatic. He's like you can barely see him opening the door. And he's scarred. And looks like he hadn't shaved or showered in five years. Another thing that was a little confusing. Allegedly, he's been living in this, you know, living like an animal in a cage, being tortured and starved. Somehow he's managed to gain 25 pounds while he was with these idiots. Don't know how that happens, but whatever. Minor detail I could have overlooked. So, he gets in there with Badger and Skinny Pete, and he's all, you know, he's fucking, he's like, got PTSD, which is understandable. But, immediately... Doesn't really explain to them what happened. Shit's on the news. They're like, ooh. Somehow manages to just lay in a bed and go, go to sleep. Then he wakes up, not sure where he is, kind of freaking out, grabs the gun. And they're like, dude, 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 chill, man. It's us. He, I think maybe you need a shower. So that was a good 
recommendation by Skinny Pete. So <laughs> they're getting him ready to end the shower, and he's like, "Yeah, man, uh, look, there's a clean towel. It's well, it's kind of clean. Feel free to get a fresh bar of Irish Spring, you know, because the one that's in there might have a hair on it or something. And then I got, you know, I got some Axe body spray. I got some Tommy Hilfinger, <laughs> and uh, what is the other one? Obsession for men, or so? I don't even know what the third fragrance is, but he says Tommy Hilfinger." Probably something Skinny Pete would say in real life um, that was funny. Okay, so they're like, dude, maybe don't shave or like, you know, do anything drastic because you want to be as unrecognizable as possible because your face is all over the fucking news, everywhere. So apparently he's a wanted fugitive. And still, 24 hours into it, not a single cop has arrived at Badger and Skinny Pete's house looking for this dude. Okay, so, the car that he escapes in, El Camino, parks it in the back, they cover it, and then he calls the dude who owns the fucking tow yard, who, you know, you pay him enough money, he'll make vehicles just disappear. Guy's name is Joe, it's cool that they brought him back, he's like, yeah, sure, I could do it. He shows up, and he's, you know, talking about... Yeah, magnets, bitch! Or, you know, like, reliving the fucking... The magic of the... Back in the day with the boys. So that was mildly clever, but not really. And he's walking around his little device, and they're like, Dude, what are you doing? Just get this fucking thing out of here. It's like, I just gotta do one more thing for my own. Beep, beep, beep. And the fucking little meter he's using goes berserk. And then the next scene is, he's in his truck saying... You better get it. It's time to leave. You better go. I'm leaving. You better do the same. And he's like, wait, what? Jesse's like, what? What the fuck? This car's got low jack and it was just activated. Really? A fucking 83 El Camino? Somebody was smart enough to put low jack on this piece of shit car? Why? Why would there be low jack on this fucking vehicle? And if there was low jack, why did it take him 24 hours? to activate it, and again, why aren't the cops already here waiting for your stupid ass? It was just a stupid way to start the movie. So, he takes a shower, he shaves, he shaves his head, he looks like the old Jesse Pinkman that everybody fucking loves, and, um, and they have these flashback cutscenes that they, they, they felt like Scenes from the series that got cut out because they were terribly boring or just did not have any positive impact on the production value of, of the show. So they just kind of like squeezed him in like he's talking with Mike and Mike says, and he's like, where should I go? What would you do if you were me? He's like, I'd go to Alaska. Well, um, okay, so Mike said go to Alaska. So that's it, bang, he wants to go to Alaska. So... Gets in his head that he wants to find this dude who helped Walter disappear. He helps people who are running from the law on the lam. Creates a new identity. Puts him in a place, kind of like witness protection. And um, he charges 125000 for this service. So, Jesse initially was supposed to meet with this dude, and then he, you know, he had a fucking popped in his head that Walt actually tried to kill his girlfriend's, poisoned his girlfriend's kid, so he flips out, called the whole thing off, and then that, you know, rolled into three more episodes, I'm not going to go into all that, but anyhow, so he has a little bit of a history with this dude, he knows who he is, this dude knows who Jesse is too, so he just pretends like he doesn't, and you're supposed to ask for a very specific vacuum part for a vacuum in a way that lets this guy know I'm not here for vacuum repair I'm here because I need to disappear well of course Jesse can't remember what the fuck he fucks it up and finally convinces the dude that you know he needs the service that this guy offers so he's got a oh before, before all that they spend 15 or 20 minutes of him tearing through a house looking for some money that may or may not be there 
And then these fucking retards that own a welding shop who apparently did the welding of the cage and the contraption that held Jesse in captivity, they were there pretending to be cops with these police jackets on, also looking for the money. It, yeah, it's just, just a weird, and none of those characters <clears throat> from the welding place were interesting or scary or funny or, they were fucking morons. I, I, I just, I don't know. So the guy gets pissy with him and says, listen, you owe me 125000 from the first attempt, so I need that plus an additional 125000 Well, Jesse doesn't have exactly 125000 He's got like, he's like 1800 short. Guy was like, sorry, can't help you. Yeah, because that would happen. The guy would turn turn down cash. Two hundred and forty eight thousand in cash. He would say, "Nah, no deal. You're eighteen hundred short. Give me a fucking break. That would not happen." Okay, so instead of Jesse just saying, "Man, fuck you," all right, take all his money and just figure it out. Go into hiding somewhere. <clears throat> Maybe forget Alaska. Go to Canada. Go to Costa Rica. I don't know. But you would think between him and Skinny Pete and Badger and all the other degenerate fucking retards he came across while he was the biggest meth dealer in the fucking U.S. for years, he would know a person or someone would know someone that could help him with a fake passport and create a new identity and all that shit. The services that this guy provides at a much lower price. But apparently not. So now, the rest of the movie is Jesse trying to get an additional $1,800 so we can go back, pay that dude $250,000 so he can help him get to Alaska with a new identity. Just, and then there's this long, so his plan is to go to the fucking welding shop where these idiots are there just doing lines of blow and I guess, and some strippers get dropped off by some dude. They don't really do anything. I don't even know why they introduced... I don't know if they were strippers or hookers or what, but... It didn't look like they were doing much. They just cut to a... They just show everybody doing coke, and then the girls leave, and then, you know... Jesse's, like, looking around the corner trying to figure out what to do. And he walks in there. Like, he... What are you, Josie Wales now? What, what are you, fucking... The Equalizer? What, Dude, you're a... You're an idiot. You don't have any weapon skills. You don't. You're, you're not very smart. You, there's five dudes in here. I'm sure at least two of them are armed. And he comes in there with this little shitty 22, and he's like, "I need 1,800 more dollars." The guy's like, "Yeah, right." And, and I, come on, let's be realistic. If he would have walked in there, those fucking morons would have just killed him. Went to his car, got his cash, and they're at a welding shop. So there's a lot of um, welding equipment, which includes, uh, cutting torches. So they could have very easily killed him. No one would have heard it. Probably disintegrated the body with one of the 50 welding pieces of machinery they had laying around. And it, it fucking would have been over with. <clears throat> but no. For some reason, Vince Gilligan got it in his fucking head that it would be funny and clever and cool if that scene played out like an old-time western. So the guy goes, what you got there, 22? Let me see what you got. Yeah, mm-hmm, that's cute. He goes, so who do you think would win, your 22 or my 45? Well, anybody who knows anything about weapons knows that a 22 is basically like a pellet gun. <clears throat> so he goes, here's what we're going to do. We'll have a shootout, and whoever wins gets all the fucking money. My half is, my third of the money is in that drawer right over there. Where's yours? He's like, it's in my car. All right, so everybody spreads out. And, you know, like, are you kidding me? What is it, 1843? What are, what are you doing? Nobody does this. It's so stupid. Even for a movie, it's fucking stupid. So the dude grabs his fucking 45, and before he can engage, Jesse has another gun, a little pistol in his fucking jacket pocket. He's like, bam, bam, bam. He shoots him real fast and kills him. And then one of the other guys has a Glock, who you would think would immediately just shoot Jesse and be done with it. No. He somehow wiggles his way out of it, negotiates fucking something with these retards, and gets off with the money. 
Meanwhile, they're having these unbelievably terrible flashbacks with one of the psychos that was pretty integral in the last season, a character named Todd, who's fucking psychotic. Okay, so Todd apparently didn't get a memo from the production team that he was going to be in about 50% of this fucking movie. So he made no effort to, like, make himself even slightly resemble the character that he was six years ago. So he's now a good 75 pounds heavier than he was when the series ended. Which is fine. I'm not fat shaming the dude, but you got a role to play. You look like the Dom DeLuise version of your character. You look He looks ridiculous. He lo They show a side view of him. He looks like he's in his seventh trimester. It, it, and his face is so swollen, you can barely see his little beady fucking eyes. Uh, but the, the flashback scenes with him are just stupid and boring and irrelevant and pointless. They weren't even, like, disturbing. They were just terrible and just made no fucking sense. Like, they... They really did not put a lot of time and effort into this little goofy movie. I don't... I was on the IMDb... Um, not the message boards. They don't have message boards anyway. But the, the reviews from viewers. And the number of people calling this thing a masterpiece and brilliant and 10 out of 10. It was a perfect ending to the... Are you fucking retarded now I didn't say this at the beginning but I am an enormous Breaking Bad fan of the series I've rewatched the entire series maybe five times um know everything about every character loved it thought it was groundbreaking I wish there were more series that intense and just creative this was a steaming pile of dog shit just so unnecessary um, didn't, I mean, it's mildly just a pinch more pleasant to know that Jesse got his shit together and actually got away and is hopefully living a pleasant, torture-free life in Alaska. So that was a nice ending to his character, because I think everybody, but that was kind of implied that he was going to be fine once he broke through the gate in this little shitty El Camino at the end of the finale. This just didn't add anything interesting. God, I just couldn't wait for it to end. I, w within 20 minutes, I knew what direction it was going in, and it just got worse and worse and less interesting and just unfucking watchable I watched it. And uh, I had to, just because I was such a huge fan of the series. But the number of people praising this are, are just blinded by the fact that they love Breaking Bad no matter what happens. A couple of monkeys could come out fucking slamming drums and having vape clouds coming out of their buttholes. And they would think, oh, that was awesome. Did you see how that fucking monkey, he was so funny. So, they could have thrown anything together, and the fucking fanboys of this series would have loved it. Um, God, it was bad. Really, really bad. If you were planning on seeing it, and you're a casual fan of Breaking Bad, don't even bother. Take that two hours and go outside and stare at a fucking tree. That'll be more exhilarating and fulfilling than watching this pile of shit. Um, if you're an enormous fan... Like I have, I've watched this series several times. Don't love every single thing about every character, but love the series as much as I did. Give it a watch, or if you've watched it already, and let me know in the comment section. Please let me know um, if you loved it, if you were just, eh, it was breaking, eh, or if you feel similarly toward this ridiculously stupid and pointless pile of steaming dog shit. If your opinion is similar to mine, please let me know that as well. I'd love to hear it. So, that's my review of the Breaking Bad El Camino movie that just got released at midnight. Um, I actually gave it, I think, three stars out of ten on IMDb, but I'm going to go change it to one. 
one star for Skinny Pete saying Tommy Hilfinger, and or maybe two stars, and then another star for thankfully not including Skylar White's character in the last in this two-hour movie, because that would have just made a steaming pile of garbage a thousand times worse than it already was. So that was nice, um, but it was terrible. So it's my opinion. You don't agree with me? Fine. Don't really give a fuck. Uh, there seems to be a short of, of actual, honest opinions on this fucking movie. Not that many of them out there. So, hope you enjoyed it. If I spoiled the thing for you, tough shit. I gave you plenty of warnings before the video started. So, that's it. Alright, let me know what you thought about it if you watched it. Or if you watch it after this, and then let me know. Alright, peace. I'm out.